Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my advice collection as usual. Well, today I would like to talk about uh, decomposition uh, that I probably can't pronounce correctly, I try anyway, the Bruhard decomposition, um, which is a very, very general statement that I will sketch at the end of a very, very general principle and a very easy one, but it's really beautiful and goes back to old Chinese mathematics at least, or even further. So it was kind of very, very classical. Um, and it's my idea of lower and upper, my idea. It's clearly not my idea. I just said it goes back to Chinese mathematicians like a thousand years ago-ish. So it's clearly not my idea. Anyway, it's this idea of lower and upper, just somewhat reformulated that you get to upper and upper. We'll see what that means. Uh, anyway, so let's just jump right into it. So the only thing we need to know essentially today are matrices and matrices, my favorite topic of all time. Uh, yeah, so let's jump into matrices. I hope you will enjoy matrices. Okay, so if you do a matrix, so here's the matrix, um, then there is a famous decomposition of the matrix into a lower triangular matrix, lower triangular and an upper triangular matrix. Yeah, so it's really, really kind of cool. And it's called the LU decomposition. And it gets pretty beautiful sometimes. So Wikipedia's example of an LU decomposition, here's my L, looks like a little fractal. Uh, and here's my U, looks like a little fractal. It's kind of the decomposition of the Welsh matrix. Um, in this case, you would, so this is L, this is U. And in this case, people could put a diagonal matrix in the middle. And this is kind of a little bit a matter of taste. So whether you want um, S upstairs, yeah, let me get rid of the scribbling. Um, so here, depends a bit what you want. You can say that one of them is normalized with ones on the diagonal. Um, and you can normalize both, then you just pull out the diagonal matrix. Whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. But what I want to stress here is that you have an LU decomposition. And depending on um, doing the pivot here, you sometimes need a permutation matrix P as well. And then the statement is every matrix can be written, somewhat ignore the permutation matrix which is kind of very delicate for me to say here because the permutations are kind of the main players in my talk. Anyway, for now, you can definitely ignore the permutations. And then the, the point is you have a low and an upper triangular matrix, right? So you can always write a matrix as, okay, you might want to need, need to do a permutation, but then it's a lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix. And the way this comes about is you want to solve a linear system of equations and you do Gaussian elimination on it and you record what you get in the upper triangular, for example, and you record what you do in the lower triangular matrix, essentially. And sometimes you need to change rows and columns in order to get the Gaussian emulation kind of worked through. Um, and that's where the permutation matrix comes from. That's essentially it. And this is just really fantastic because now think of you want to solve a linear system of linear equations, so I have a kind of a matrix, something like this, my matrix A, AX equals B, so you can just write A as lower triangular, upper triangular, and that's just more much easier to solve. And this is like super classical. So the oldest um, reference I found was uh, well, the, the nine chapters of no, sorry, the nine chapters on the mathematical art, which is a, kind of a famous Chinese old um, math book, and they they wanted to solve linear equations. So they discovered what is called Gaussian elimination like a few hundred years before Gauss, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's about system solving of system of, uh, solving systems of linear equations. So this LU decomposition is kind of really old. Of course, you should be a little bit careful with this. They will never write it down. Uh, so if you really want to read that book, I never tried, but I'm pretty sure they will never write it down in this language because the language came, kind, of, kind of came out a bit later, but it's essentially in there. So it's solving systems of linear equations. And if you do that, you eventually come up with this idea that solving them for an upper triangular matrix is just much easier because uh, I could just do first and then next and then next and then next by eliminating variables one by one. But no, not every matrix is upper triangular, so you need to record the, the row and column changes you do in a lower triangular matrix. That's essentially what this is. And this is the really famous LU decomposition. That, this video is not called the LU decomposition. Maybe it should have been, but I went for a difficult name, the Buhar decomposition. I'm still not quite convinced whether I got that wrong, right or wrong, 
but it doesn't matter. So here's the blue heart decomposition. So instead of having a lower and upper, I just have upper. So just have two upper. So the blue heart decomposition now says you can actually, I will have a more precise statement on the next slide, you can actually change the lower triangular matrix into an upper triangular matrix if you throw in nice permutations, okay? So um, those permutations, we've got a little baby calculation, you can change the lower one into an upper one if you throw in permutations. That's the price you pay, but you can change lower to upper. And then essentially what you should get is, right? So before we had lower and upper, but now we should change lower to upper. So you should have an upper. Well, maybe I should do it this, this way. We have uh, now upper and upper. And that's essentially the Blue Hardy composition. That's a bit, well, we'll see. That, that, that's a bit under the top, if you want, not over the top, exactly the difference. Um, so the Blue Hardy decomposition is pretty, pretty damn fucking cool, but this is the, the essence of it. And this is what Bruja wanted to generalize essentially. And the permutation matrix that flow around here. So we had a permutation matrix here, and now we spit in some extra permutation matrices. And the precise statement now is the following. We have this following decomposition, and this is probably how Bruja would have written it, um, into a B, a W, and a B. The W is really just a permutation matrix, and the B is an upper triangular matrix. So we can write every matrix as upper triangular, permutation matrix, upper triangular. And that is the Bruja decomposition of the general linear group, if you want. And usually people write it like this. So G is my the algebra, the group, whatever. In this case, it's the Lie group. And B is the Borel, the upper triangular matrices. And W is the Vial group, so uh, the permutation matrices in this case. And you can really just do it. So if you, and you really need those. So here, for example, uh, this matrix, if you want to write it as upper, upper, so here's upper, here's upper, then you need the non trivial permutation matrix in the middle. And here, kind of upper and upper and the non-trivial permutation matrix in the middle. And you can do that, of course. Um, and if you just have an upper triangle matrix, you just can put the trivial permutation in the middle. But this is kind of the point. And the point of Bruja was essentially to first notice that, and probably people have noticed that before, but then write it in this way, which as the Lie theorist, looks very suggestive that you might can, can actually do that for other Lie groups, and you can. And that's kind of, that's the, the really the Bruja theorem. So this is kind of the Bruja theorem for the symmetric group or for the general linear group, if you want, which really is just the, L, the classical LU decomposition that you see in Gaussian elimination. But here you can just, Bruja didn't just said, that works very general. You can replace your Lie algebra by something else, but an SO or an SP, a symplectic group or something, uh, you get a slightly different thing in the middle so the vial group will be, sorry, the symmetric group will be replaced by the vial group of the corresponding type, which in my example here is essentially just a symmetric group and the semi-direct product was some Z2. But anyway, the, the point is it works really, really general and you still have this decomposition. And think of it as follows. I say it again, it is an LU decomposition. So it helps you to solve linear systems of equations. So this should be really powerful in Lie theory. And yeah, it's one of the, one of the key results uh, in general Lie theory. And this was what Bruja was really up for, not just replacing a lower matrix by an upper matrix, which may, might not be that exciting, but really have this linear decomposition, the, the LU decomposition for arbitrary Lie groups, which is kind of really, really an amazing statement. So it's a kind of very, very general type of statement. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.